because it's like this is who I am and I'm not going to hide it from you because I am a normal girl and I'm figuring everything out myself so for me that's kind of my journey I've, I've struggled with anxiety and I'm, I'm learning to cope with it I, I meditate I journal a lot I take a lot of time for myself and when I come home from work I allot like an hour to do something of mine that I really want to do like I paint my wall and I decorate my walls <laughs> like it's a kind of a strange thing but I love I love doing anything like therapeutic like that I love spending time with my family but I think doing allotting time for yourself is what I've learned is, is the most important because you'll find yourself within those moments. Was that part of the reason that you recently, I believe you left TikTok recently, right? Was that right. Yeah, you know, I, I, I really focus on positive environments and I think yeah. that you are a product of your environment. So when you're surrounding yourself with good people, you are going to be a good person. You learn from people, you learn from wise people. I've been lucky enough to share moments with people that are very amazing, like my parents and also people in this industry. And when I was on a social media platform that was generating a lot of hate and uh, shade, yeah. I just felt like I didn't want to be part of something that was enjoying that and kind of embracing that. So I had to leave because I felt like it wasn't right of me to advocate for cyberbullying and then be part of something that, I hear that, you. that enjoys that. We were glad to see that you at least popped up in Noah's TikTok recently. So that the love is, is still strong there. Well, clearly. I mean, listen, I, I love the dances, but I just, I don't <laughs> like the app itself. <laughs> I it. So it's the best of all possible worlds. So, so. <laughs> so Noah came over, he had a COVID test, came over and was like, let me like, let's do a TikTok. So I was like, okay, we're going to do it together. And so it was really nice to be able to, to do that. And I, I know that a lot of every, everyone was excited to see me back, but I'm not, I'm not back from, from my account, but I'll definitely okay. be peering through. What's the pop culture bond at this point with Noah, having known him a, a, a few years? Like, what do you guys bond over now versus when you first met? What's the, what are the conversations well, when about? When we first met, you know, we were very much young and, and we were so into like sleepovers and scary movies and like making movies on our iPads. Like that was what we were doing. And now it's more like, hey, you know, <laughs> cool you know <laughs> we're like cool kids now Ugh. but um he's so amazing i love talking to him and catching up and it's so funny he came over to my house and the first thing we did was i said let me show you my car and we go outside we sit in my car for like an hour and we just catch up and we're in the pitch black i mean the, the car was pitch black and we were sitting in there i had my flashlight on and we just talked about everything and caught up and it was so nice to be able to to talk to someone that knows my position because they're in the same yeah, you've gone through this journey with this cast. I mean, is the environment on set different now in season four? Obviously, you guys, again, you're at different places in your lives. Maybe the finish line starts to get in sight. Like, you know, this is a finite thing. So do you start to get a little bit kind of like, oh, we have to enjoy this. Like, we, this, this might just be another year or two. Who Like, who knows? Right. Yeah, I mean, listen, Stranger Things is, I get emotional even talking about the end because the end to me, I... I I don't want to think about it you know this is like my home it's like when i go and do a movie it's like all right like i'm gonna go home to stranger things this is where i belong and so being on set recently it's been like since since i was like in season one it's kind of like the same people and the same vibe you know listen it's very different we we have much more of a, a free range to do what, what we like. They trust you more and you're older. They trust yeah. us yeah. and yeah, yeah, and it's like, it's more of a success and we have yeah. more of a weight on our shoulders. But I will say like, I love the show and I, I love going to set and having my character grow more. It's very much the same as season one. What is the last piece of TV or film that you really obsessed over? Last night I watched a very good film called Closer with Natalie yeah. Portman. I've never watched that. My mom was like, you should watch that. And I watched it in the red hair. I'm like, ready to do yeah. it. Yeah, she, she's, pr she's pretty good. She's not bad, that one. She's not bad, that one. She's <laughs> not like my full-time inspiration, not at all. <laughs> Is she really? Is that the one you put on the pedestal? Yes, for sure, yeah. What was the first role? You haven't seen Star Wars, so I know it wasn't that. If she finds that out about this, she might not want this friendship. No, oh, I met her once and almost like welled up. She goes, I heard people think that we look alike and I'm just so lucky. And I was like, sure. <laughs> Let me just sit here quietly for the rest of the interview. I was like, you're lucky? I was like, nah. Because I feel like I can push that now. Nah, let me introduce you to Zilla. Zilla, nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, uh, nah. 
you're stunning and I will never be half as good as you ever. So that's it. And so, and then I started singing Brown Eyed Girl to her. <laughs> as one does. So you mentioned before, you know, Enola Holmes, which I assume hopefully you want to return to that character. I mean, our I plans are put. Yeah, I mean, I would love to. I, I, I'm begging for it to happen. And you've, you've got like a bunch of things like in the hopper as a producer, you're potentially, I think, going to be directed by the Russo brothers. Like that's kind of ginormous. Is there, yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you're passionate about all of these potential future projects, but is there one that you're like really psyched to get going on to get your feet on set? Yes, absolutely. I have one specific project that I'm just, I'm crazy over. I'm like continuing to read the treatment and the scripts for it because of how excited I am. I've been wanting to do this role for like a few years. Um, and so- What is it? What is it? What? You can't just tee it up like that. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I've been wanting to do this role for a few years. And so now it's finally come to fruition and I'm very, very excited to be able to film it. Can you say just aspect wise of like what's exciting about it without revealing what it is? Um, what's exciting about it is that it's uh, a period piece um, in a foreign country. Okay. That, that's part. That's part of the, the joy too. You're talking about Australia. You're you're checking off all these boxes. You're traveling. Well, hopefully, I, I'm actually playing a savar. I'm a safari. I'm in the safari. That's my character. I'm like, here's a lizard. I'm gonna be Robert Owen's uh, wife. I play his wife. Oh, there's the, the exclusive. The I was not expecting that. Watch that be the headline. Honestly, <laughs> after all I've said, that's gonna be Robert Owen's wife. No, not at all. But I'm saying, <laughs> I'm trying to play with. You. Never mind. No, we know you have the driver's license now, so I know the next part is in a Fast and Furious movie. That's that's the no-brainer. That's that's, that's, that's why you got the license. That's exactly why. I've all, that's been my uh, dream 